This game could go down to the wire and it'd be almost hard to tell who would come out victorious out of this. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. So today we're going to do an overall preview of the upcoming match between Morocco and USA. This is a match that I feel like life consistently seems to want to throw at me considering that I am from America but also have Moroccan heritage. So it's like they always want to see my national teams go up against each other. But as someone who kind of has good insight on both sides, I'm going to go into great details discussing where I think one might match up better than the other one. But before I go ahead and begin, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help promote my channel to an audience looking to learn more about Moroccan football. But with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. So Morocco versus USA. It's always a tricky question. A lot of people ask me who am I going to support for these matches. Nine times out of ten, I usually tend to support Morocco just because although I do have a lot of respect for the USA, I've just always been more of a bigger fan for Morocco. But to get back to the main topic, this match, it'll be an interesting match to say the least because in paper it does look like you know morocco should be edging over usa pretty comfortably but also having been someone who has been following usa under 23 during their time in group a it's fair to say that this isn't going to be just some easy stroll in the park you will say will definitely also have their own mindset i can already imagine that a lot of usa fans are probably thinking to themselves Oh, we probably dodged a bullet not having played Argentina, but instead getting Morocco. And you know what? That's their belief. I'm not going to try to, you know, change them, force them to believe otherwise. But it's fair to say that if my wholehearted opinion, considering I've been watching both these groups, I honestly got to say that I think USA would have been better off going up against Argentina, not because I want to see USA lose. Just because the way I've been seeing Argentina play doesn't give enough confidence that this team can go the entire way of winning this tournament. I definitely expect that once they come up against a fairly relatively good team, they will be set aback and could possibly get eliminated. And USA, with how they love to do high pressing attack, could have easily stroll and made life difficult for the Argentina. But of course, that's not life itself. But let's get back to how these two teams match up. For USA, let's start with them. USA, they did start off rocky, losing 3-0 to fans before edging over Guinea and New Zealand. And now, it should be noted that the matches against Guinea and New Zealand, both those opponents that USA went up against, weren't exactly the best test to truly tell you. But that shouldn't also say that, oh, you know, USA just got over by a landslide. Because if you look at that match between USA and France, for the first good majority of the match where it was still nil-nil, USA looked more like the team that could have easily gotten a result. But it felt like after that first goal, they just kind of started simmering down. And once that second goal hit, came in, then it was completely lights out for the USA as they no longer had, I'd say, the energy to want to actually go and get a result and more or less just relied on their luck to get a result in the other two games. And that is a crucial thing that the Moroccan national team needs to take into consideration. The USA team are a team, doesn't matter which category that they're in, they all follow the same structure where they love to do the high press, make quick passes, and always find dangerous opportunity in the offense. But of course, this team isn't without its fall. For all the high pressing that they do, and granted, it does end up at time working because they too tend to, you know, make life difficult for the defense it does 80 percent of the time leave them vulnerable in the back and it should be noted that their two center backs are their two overage player in that they have zimmerman and miles robertson two veterans who are well recognized in the senior national team zimmerman who has been a consistent mainstay with the national team 
and as well Robinson who's on and off but you can never discredit his you know work ethic towards whenever he is on the national team and of course you got the likes of you know maybe John Tolkien or Caleb Wiley who are up and coming wing back talent that could definitely see themselves getting a move in the near future I think Caleb Wiley recently got a move to Chelsea but of course the details are for that is you know something we don't really need to discuss you know those players i'd say for the most part their defense in my opinion are probably way better than ours of course um that's just not saying like by a huge margin maybe by a smidge a smidge is all i'm saying in that you know you got more experienced center back as for us Yes, Mehdi Bukamira has been great. Usama El Azuzi has been great. Granted that he is not really a center back, but being put as one, they've been doing their job. But of course, it's no surprise that I keep emphasizing on how bad our under 23's defense has been throughout this tournament. Yes, we did get the clean sheet against Iraq, but there were even still moments during that game where. Iraq could have easily scored. I think they had two golden opportunity that if it weren't for Munir and Zachary Elowadi could have easily changed the trajectory, especially with the standing and goal difference, could have easily given Argentina the edge over Morocco. But of course, like I said, I feel that with that, um, how should I say, clean sheet, hopefully it'll give them confidence for this next game against USA. And of course, there's the likes of their midfield. I feel their midfield work perfectly at times you got to think that they have their another overage player uh, in Mihailovic who has kind of refound his form he was a player who recently was considered a top talent by USA way back before he made his move to AZ Alkmaier and that's where his career kind of stagnated came back to Colorado Rapids and quickly refound his form and now is showing that he has actually been one of the top scorers for the USA so he is one that should not be taken for granted and of course there's Tanner Testman a player from Venezia who you know I'd say this past season has actually been pretty good you know there were some question marks in regards to his first official season in Europe a lot of people didn't think that he could measure up to life in Europe but he's actually taking it so well and now transitioning it to the under 23 level so it definitely shows that their midfield is kind of coherent and now here is where we get to the forward I think their forward for the most part is probably the most impressive you got Griffin Yao uh, up and rising talent Paxton Harrison, who many fans are considering the better version of the Harrison brother because Paxton Harrison does also have a brother called Brendan Harrison who also plays in Europe but right now is going through a rocky phase. And as well, I'd say Kevin Paredes. He is one that doesn't get a lot of mention from the USMNT fans, but he quietly had a good season with Wolfsburg so he has definitely transitioned it into the under 23 as well so it's fair to say that a lot of these players that are gonna be playing for the USA on match day already have some form of experience with the first team not a lot of them are just waving around still playing with the youth category a lot of these players are actually you know players that you see on the first team sheet list so it is vital that Morocco is on their A game, especially in the defense, because in the end, the most important thing is you're going to want to absorb a lot of pressure, especially with the high press. And I mentioned that is USA's main bread and butter. But as also discussed, USA will consistently do this to the point where they start to have cracks in the back. And I think once that first crack opens and if say if Morocco gets the first goal that could easily open the floodgates for what would be a downfall for the USA see USA can keep a momentum going but once they start letting the first goal in you can start to tell that their how do I say the energy or their chemistry starts to die out it's almost as if the confidence in them just basically dies out and if you think one goal's worse 
Seeing the, how they react, the second goal is basically just putting the whole game to rest. That is how I noticed it in almost every category. Even in the U.S. Senior National Team, I tend to notice it a lot. So that is one thing that I think you will say will need to focus more on. Because you already saw in the game against France, and of course, as mentioned, the New Zealand game and the Guinea game really didn't tell the whole story, but it still does show that USA has a lot of firing power from all cylinder. So Morocco will need to be mindful whenever they're on the offense. Now here's where Morocco lies and how I think they can fare. <clears throat> now I mentioned a lot about, you know, a lot of their defense being pretty good, maybe edging out Morocco just a smidge, but it is vital important that I think in the grand scheme, I believe that, uh, how should I say this, USA would have some trouble. Here's where I think a lot of the trouble can come from, you know, Morocco. See, Morocco, they are practically in my opinion the most solidified in the wings you on the right side you got Ashraf Hakimi Bala Okunus who loves to shift on the right or on the left side and as well as Ilias Akomak you know those three themselves could cause a lot of pain for I believe it is Tolkien who will be on that side or Caleb Wiley I believe and Tanner Tesman and if you get them in a stranglehold especially with a consistent attack you are going to make life for them difficult. And that is basically the same thing said on the left side. You got Zachary Elawadi, you can have, say, Tyrion or Amir Richardson sh shift to the left side to help out. And I, I'm going to say this now. Have Abde as Azuli be as a lineup. Then I think you are going to give Morocco, not Morocco, USA, a very hard time. And yes, you heard me say that. Abde is Azuli. I've been saying this since that match against Ukraine. I feel like he's slowly coming back to that form that we re once remember him from Osasuna. He definitely showed what he is capable of, especially in that final game against Iraq, which he was one of the top players. And I think he will definitely give the left side a lot of pain as well. And the best part is our strikers in that Sophie and Rahimi. I feel like Rahimi has been probably the biggest shining light out of this team. He's always willing to go and find himself open in dangerous place in order to find good scoring opportunity. And lastly, I think another part where the USA may struggle is in the midfield. We've seen Richardson and Targeline just play fantastic football whenever they're matched against each other matched with each other they just do wonders and you think that's pretty much almost everything except the center back where I think many big Bukamir and Usama El Azuzi could do their jump comfortably but it's also a dilemma because you got to remember our wing backs love to attack more than they love to defend so at time it really just leaves Usama El Azuzi and Mehdi Bukamir alone as the two main center back defending while you know the onslaught of offense is coming from our side but it is also critical that if morocco loses the ball like you have to be extremely careful because if they lose the ball then as mentioned already usa who love to do high pressing attack will make morocco pay for it and don't be surprised if that happens a couple of times throughout this game but overall I could see this overall being a very fair match where it could end come down to a tie whether it be 2-2, 1-1 or even more it could end up being a 2-0 victory but if I was to say the 2-0 victory I'd actually say that Morocco has the higher chance of getting this win. No discredit to my USA team. I hold them with high regards. I just feel like if you did everything against, you know, like how you defended against Argentina, if you bring that same defending mentality as well as that high attack energy like you did in Iraq and mashed them together, you are in to give USA probably the hardest test they have 
and probably make it way difficult for them to get much possession as well as create a lot of goal scoring opportunity. So there you have it. This is an overall preview of Morocco versus USA. Of course, with everything that I mentioned, it's still kind of tricky to fully tell who might come out victorious. But after watching both, you know, my national team go up in their respective group stage, I just kind of have to give the edge to Morocco. As mentioned, you know, both teams have their greatness and their faults, but I think in terms of chemistry, Morocco has probably the best chemistry, if not one of the top best in the tournament. And it's going to be very tricky for the USA to be able to match that. Especially because Morocco love to play their form of Tiki Taka. Which at times we've seen in the past can cause problems for the USA. When they go up against teams who are quick at passing, making dangerous play. Which is something that Morocco is well known for doing and has been doing throughout the group stage. But of course I would love to hear your thoughts and opinion. What do you think about this upcoming match? Do you think Morocco will win? Do you think USA will win? Do you think it'll end in a draw and go to penalties? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions about this overall matter, but more importantly, I'm just glad that you all made it to the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.